Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and in this video, I'll be covering delayed blowback operating systems in firearms. Now, a delayed blowback operating system works somewhat similar to the way a straight blowback operating system works, in that the bolt is not locked in place during the firing of the cartridge. But unlike that straight blowback operating system, it's not just the weight of the bolt and the strength of the recoil spring that keeps the action closed long enough to get the cash, gas pressures in the chamber at a lower, safer level. Now, to explain what all that means, I think I'll start off by talking about the basics of what happens when a cartridge is fired. So, the firing pin will strike the primer and the base of the cartridge case. This will ignite the propellant, and as that propellant burns, it's going to build up pressure, and that pressure is going to push the bullet down the barrel. Now, that much you probably already have an understanding of, but another side effect of that buildup of pressure is it's going to push the case walls of that cartridge hard against the walls of the chamber. Now, this is a good thing because it creates a nice gas seal so that there's no gas leak into the rest of the system. But the problem with those forces pushing on the case walls is that if the gas pressure is too high during extraction, the period when the cartridge is being removed from the chamber, the pressure pushing out on the case walls can cause the parts of the case no longer supported by the chamber to bulge and in extreme cases even rupture, possibly dangerously so. This can be done in a controlled fashion to fire form some cartridge cases to different dimensions, but that is again outside the scope of this video. All right, with all that being said, uh, the first system we're going to look at is a roller delayed uh, system in the family of delayed blowback systems. Now, the example we're going to look at is the H&K MP5. We have uh, the bolt. Now, the bolt is actually in a couple different pieces, and this is going to be kind of hard to see uh, until I kind of show it in a, a great deal of uh, detail here. So, as we come out here, so in the first uh, little x-ray here, you might be able to just see there's this wedge here. Now, the wedge forms one part of the bolt, and then there's the bolt head itself. So as we come out, I want you to keep an eye on this part here, and then the bolt head. And I'm going to slow it down a little bit, but not a ton. So we're going to do, well, yeah, let's do uh, half speed. So, as I fire, all right, you might not have noticed exactly what happens, but let's slow it down a little bit more. All right, so one thing you may have noticed as we fire this, and I'm going to go ahead and pause it so we can kind of go through things a little bit more slowly. You might notice that there is a little bit of separation of movement here. And this is going to highlight the fact that there are actually two parts of the bolt. This is the bolt head, and this is the part that uh, has that locking wedge that I was showing you earlier. So if we uh, x-ray this a little bit further, you can see that that locking wedge, as we go through the action here, has a little bit separate movement than the bolt bolt head, and we can see that this part here of the bolt moves along with that wedge. All right, so let's explain exactly what's going on with this system. As the name implies with the delayed blowback system, we're trying to delay the opening of the action for a period of time, again, to keep those gas pressures at a lower level. Now, this has an advantage in that we don't need as heavy and bulky of a bolt and as strong as of a recoil spring to achieve what you get with a straight blowback system. Now, obviously, there's a little bit more complicated machining and manufacturing that goes into making this that you, that you would have in a straight blowback system. But, uh, okay, so let's go over this and slow speed and see what happens. So what would normally happen with a straight blowback system is that pressure that's caused, that, that pushes the, uh, the bullet one way, is also going to push the bolt head the other way. And as I was, uh, I was explaining with the stro straight blowback system, because the bolt is bigger and heavier, it takes uh, you know a little bit of a time to get enough momentum uh, to push that heavy bolt. As you may remember from your physics, that a heavier uh, object takes a little bit more energy to get going than a lighter object. But in any case, with a delayed blowback system, 
you're still going to have that same push on the bolt head. But the main key element is the rollers here, which is why this is called the roller delayed system. Now, you may just be able to see that there is, and we might even have to go up another level, a cutout that matches those rollers in the receiver. Now, it's going to be kind of an angled cut that comes out like this. And what happens is that because of that cutout in the frame so that it, it, it becomes narrower here, the rollers can't really push back. Now, the rollers are part of the bolt head. They can't really push back, so instead they go along that angled cut and try and push in. And what's on the inside, if we go back to this view, is this wedge. And again, we see another angled cut here. So, as the firing pin strikes, what happens is these rollers press, press in hard. Now, honestly, the model here probably doesn't represent it in a way that you can really maybe understand it. But what happens is those rollers, they're trying to move back, but they can't. So instead, they move in. And the wedge, because of this angled surface, is going to be squeezed hard, and it's going to start going backwards. So it moves before the bolt head can move, before these rollers finally suck in and allow the, the bolt head to move. This is the delaying part of the action. It's just that little bit of time. Now, it's, it's a very much of a fraction of a second, but that little bit of time that it takes for those rollers to push in on that wedge and that wedge to get moving enough so that the rollers can suck in enough that they can move along inside the receiver, that little bit of time is all you need to delay that action. And then the bolt's going to move all the way to the rear, eject the spent case, move back. It also cocks the hammer here. And as it comes forward, it will strip a new cartridge in, pushing it into the chamber, and we're ready to go again. And then if we start that over from the beginning, and I'll go ahead and just let this play, we see the hammer strikes, and all that happens. Let's slow it down very much more. And we'll look at this one more time. So, play. Wedge gets pushed back. Rollers suck in. And there we go. And it's the, the compression of the recoil spring that's going to bring the bolt back forward. Now, as I was saying, the advantage of all of this is that you can have a lighter, more compact bolt and a less strong recoil spring that you would then you would need in a straight blowback operating system. And the advantage of that is first off your your firearm isn't going to be as heavy or big. It's more compact and easier to carry. But another side effect is it doesn't take as much strength if you were to manually uh operate uh the bolt, bring it back, it doesn't take as much strength to do that. Uh so it's easier to use for most people. So those are some of the advantages of, the, of a delayed blowback system. And not only that, it can contend a little bit better with more powerful cartridges. So as we get into rifle-powered cartridges, that's going to be one of the big advantages of a delayed blowback system is it has uh, the ability to contend with those pressures a little bit better than a blowback system would. For a blowback system to do the same thing in a rifle, you would require such a heavy bolt. As it'd be so big and heavy and bulky, and the recoil spring required would be so strong that it would be just too awkward and too hard to operate for most people. Or maybe it wouldn't keep the pressure low enough, uh, and, and a number of other things that could be a problem for using a, a straight blowback system. Yes, a straight blowback system is cheaper and easier to manufacture, but it has those problems. Now, the firearms that use this are the uh, H&K MP5 that we see in this example, one of the most uh, common examples of a roller-delayed system. We also have the H&K G3 rifle. Uh, and because of those uh, firearms and the prevalence of those firearms, uh, the roller delayed blowback system is probably going to be the most commonly encountered uh, type of a delayed blowback operating system that you'll see. But let's go ahead and get into the uh, the next uh, uh, type of delayed blowback system, which a lever delayed system.
The example we're going to be using for the lever delayed system is the FAMAS F1. This is a French made battle rifle and being a rifle it is a chambered in a higher pressure rifle round. So we can see an example of a, a delayed blowback system uh, chambered for that higher pressure round. Uh, in any case, a lever delayed uh, system is going to work on the same principle as your uh, roller delayed system in that you're delaying the opening of the action until that gas pressure in the chamber can be at a lower, safer level. How this is achieved is slightly different, but just like what we had with the H&K MP5, you do have a two-part bolt. You have the bolt head itself, and then you have the bolt carrier here, and this is going to interact with the recoil spring uh, to compress it and then also uh, cl close the action as well. But it is also works as our camming surface that allows the whole system to work and how the system works well first off why don't we just show it we'll go quick speed and then we'll kind of slow it down so you can see it so that's at half speed okay so you might have noticed just like with the H, H and K MP5 that this tarp top part of the bolt moved first and then we had movement with the bolt head. So let's watch that again. Okay, so what's working here is a very similar principle. We have the gas pressure in the chamber is trying to push the bolt head backwards. But you have this lever here, and you also have a pin. Now, if you watch... And we're going to really slow this down, and I'm going to actually, I guess we don't need to slow it down that much if I just pause it. All right, so let's keep play, pay close attention to what happens with that lever as the forces of the bolt is trying to push back. Well, as we go, we have the hammer strikes. There goes the firing pin. Now we have very slight movement with the bolt here. But... The lever is going to strike that pin. And that pin's going to stop the bolt head from moving. But because the lever is starting to go around that round surface of the pin, it's rotating. As it rotates, the top part here, the carrier, the bolt carrier, is going to be brought to the rear. And we can see this if we go up another level through this camming surface with the lever. So let's watch that again. And you can see as it rotates around, it's eventually going to get to a bottom point here where it can then go around this pin. And you can see there's actually a cutout right here in the pin, right there where that flat surface is. And eventually it's going to meet a flat surface for this lever. And at that point, the bolt can actually start to really move to the rear. So again, it's the same principle. You have a delaying part to the action that is going to keep that action closed just a little bit longer. And then once we hit the rear here, we're going to activate the ejector, push out that cartridge case, and then the recoil spring is going to bring that bolt back and chamber the next round. So again, very similar procedure, just done a different way. You have just have a camming lever rather than the rollers pressing in on a wedge. That's all the really the difference is. And it's just two ways of doing more or less the same thing. Now that we've discussed the uh, roller delayed blowback system and the lever delayed blowback system, I'd like to discuss a, a couple other types of uh, delayed blowback operating systems that exist. Unfortunately, I don't have any examples in the program I'm using of either of these that I'll talk about, but I think they're still important uh, for a further discussion of delayed blowback operating systems. The first one I'm going to talk about is gas delayed blowback systems. Now, this is different than a gas operated system in that the bolt is not locked in place. Just like with these other blowback systems, you're going to have a rearward push from that expanding gas on the bolt or slide. The difference with this system is, just like with a gas-operated system, you're going to have a, a port in the barrel that some of the expanding gases is going to escape into. 
with a delayed blowback system, there's going to be a uh, piston in the cylinder that that, uh, that gas expands into. And that piston, uh, as the pressure of that gas pushes against it, is going to resist the rearward motion of the slide or bolt, thus delaying the action. But as the uh, pressure in that uh, cylinder dissipates, as it will over time, that resistance becomes less and less until the bolt or slide can just open freely. Uh, so some examples of this, the most common ones that I think you'll see, are the H&K P7 and the Walther CCP. Now the Walther CP CCP is a, a handgun that just came out very recently, and I'm going to include a link in the description of this video to a review of that handgun done by InRange TV, as I think it go, uh, does a good job of explaining uh, the, uh, the, the system uh, in action, as well as an interesting review of the uh, a newly released handgun. Now, the last system I want to talk about is the toggle delayed blowback system. Now, this works on a knee joint, and this is going to be one of the ones that's kind of hard to explain without really uh, seeing it. Um, but the best way to describe it is this has, as I said, a moving joint. And uh, an example of this is the Pedersen rifle, which was a main competitor to the M1 Garand during the U.S. Army trials for a new semi-automatic rifle. And I will include a link to the description uh, uh, for a video from Forgotten Weapons on the Pedersen rifle, so you can see kind of how that works. Um, but the point is that the opening and closing of that, uh, that joint as it bends is the delaying action. The time it takes for that knee joint to bend and allow the, the bolt to kind of move is how uh, the delaying action works. It's just that extra time to open or unfold that joint. So uh, that's more or less, uh, I would say, the more common examples of the delayed blowback system uh, used in firearms. I hope you guys have learned something from this video and enjoyed this video. This is Mouse Gunner signing out.